entrance. <laughs> no, don't give me left in a camera, man. What kind of disrespect <laughs> oh, is that? Oh, what it, kind of disrespect is that? There was a camera. Let me teach you how to use this device, yeah, this invention. Trust, trust you what is this? Marina guest. Well, thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate it. Look at this guy. Yeah, 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 cool. Look, he, shaved. he looks younger than me. I don't like it. <laughs> Once we start finish filming, I'm going to tell you how old this is. You're going to be so surprised. Hey, how are you girls? Good. Okay, okay, thank you. So we are here with Chris. Chris, what's up, Chris? This first time he shakes my head, hand. He always gives me just like a fist bump. I don't know why that's his right. style, I guess. Casual. Casual. Keeping it casual. Well, he set up, look at this space. Look at this location. He set up the chairs, everything. I mean, how can you beat this, Chris? Only the best person. He got the permits, everything with the hotel. You know, he, he did a little schmoozing, a <laughs> little smile. He gave a couple of winks and da-da. Hey, here we are. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> You told me right away you were working on a movie. Yeah. And I yeah. said, hey, I write music. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, what? Um, what was that about? A year and a half ago? Yeah, a year and a half ago or something. Yeah, a couple years ago, you know. And Chris is a, Chris is a composer. He's a multi-talented artist. And when you told me who did you work with in the past, like I was shocked. Like tell, tell us a couple of people that you worked in the past. Well, I mean, I got my start um, playing in rock bands, and uh, my first, my first like good gig was opening up for ELO because they were doing like a reunion tour, uh -huh. um, and I applied for an internship at Hans Zimmer's music studio, and the studio manager. He loved ELO. <laughs> oh, he liked he liked the band that you are he, that, <laughs> that, that, I had, that you uh, opened, up, opened up, yeah. Yeah, so that was a good connection, and then I ended up getting hired there. At and Hans Zimmer. Yeah, his studio working in the dub room for like three years. And I think his office is in Santa Monica, right? Yeah, it's just down the street from my studio. From your studio, so his studio is very close to your studio. Yeah, that's yeah? actually why I set up my shop where it was, because I wanted to be able to get between the two studios uh -huh, easily. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I worked there for about three years, and then um, some former colleagues that worked there started up um, multiple music publishing companies and uh -huh. and I signed with them and um, have some music in you know ABC uh, programs and overseas uh -huh. and Universal Pictures. Hans Zimmer is enough. He worked for Hans Zimmer. That's enough for me. I was um, on the Gladiator soundtrack. I was asked to submit some music. Um, for a song and I presented a demo and I was told that Peter Gabriel was going to sing it and I mean I spent weeks on this thing <laughs> and it never saw the light of day and, 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 and Peter Gabriel never ended up making it either. <laughs> but but, you, but here, the, here's the deal, but you were in a position yeah, to it, be given that opportunity yeah, or you a, were at the level that they considered it. It was a good, it was a good learning experience. So. I'm just, I mean, I'm happy to know Chris and to work with you on this, but the fact that you had such a background, such a great experience, I mean, that adds just that much more value to the whole thing, you know? Well, I mean, it's a, a testament to, to you. I mean, when we met, you were so enthusiastic and, um, you know, entrepreneurial about all these endeavors you were tackling. And um, I've tried to shoot, you know, a couple of short uh -huh. film projects and found it incredibly difficult and with a very minimal cast. And you have this you know, this piece with 20-some people in it. Over and, 200. <laughs> well, I'm talking about just on screen. Oh, the actors, the actors, yeah. Yeah, and just blown away with a limited budget that you were able to pull it off. Um, so I was happy to help and try and lend my little bit of creativity in the beginning. Thank you. Well, thanks for that, you know. It's, it means when it comes from a pe person like your level, you know, with such an experience and you joined and you see a purpose behind it, you know, because, you know, I cannot offer much. I can't offer anything hardly, you know. Yeah. But, well, I know how it goes. I mean, you got to you got to start somewhere and <clears throat> you started you started high. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just want to say Chris is one of the few people who saw the rough cut of the film. We watched it on a brick screen and I was surprised because uh, when you watched my rough cut, you brought me a present. He brought me a Francis Ford Coppola wine and he signed it and I don't, I, I, I don't drink, 
but I still have that wine as a souvenir with okay. Chris's signature. Wow. And I didn't even know Coppola has the wine, but that was a nice little gift from him. Maybe we can uh, drink it when the, when this when the movie is finished. The big screens, yeah. yeah, the movie is finished and here's the big screen. How did you feel? Tell me about when you experienced when you watched the rough cut. Because you, you don't know anything about me. I mean, I'm a first time filmmaker. I invited you to see my movie, a feature film. I mean, probably, who is this guy on a basketball court making a feature film? What the hell is he talking about? I can't even understand his accent. Yeah. So no, tell me your experience. I'm curious, bro. Yeah, when when I watched the first screening of it, um, first of all, it was it was over at uh, Lantana, and I was impressed that you had a screening room over there. Because, um, like I said, you know, we we met at the basketball court, yeah. so I wasn't in, expecting much. <laughs> and, and then. Uh, it was two hours into this project. Um, I, well, actually, I say halfway through, um, the movie takes a turn, a twist that you're not expecting, and I was like pleasantly surprised. And, and at the end, you know, we had a little question-answer thing, um, and you had some prominent people in the audience, and everybody was uh, very positive about huh? what they had just seen. And it was really more like. Um, yeah, I think when you once you just do some tight editing on this, you're going to have a nice completed yeah. project that you yeah. can be proud of. Yeah. Thanks, man. Well, I can't wait to show you the, pro the, the final version because the rough cut is rough, you know. Sure. Sound was off, the color was off. And also we had like lots of scenes that were like, how you say, like fat, fatty scenes. We have to trim the fat. So now the, now the movie is like completely different. And as you well know with the animation, it's just like a different level, different ball game. But it was a tremendous help for me to say to you that when you watch the movie with people that you don't know, with people like you, I mean, I know you, but you didn't know anything about my movie, the story, oh. you didn't know nothing. And I mean, you had a, um, you had a, I can't remember if it was played at the end or if it was in the beginning, but you had an introductory, you know, segment about your, your story. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. I mean, everybody was blown away Thank by, you. <laughs> by what you have uh, accomplished to get just to the states, um, and then once you got here, um, your work ethics just uh, to be commended. I mean, most most folks don't don't have this kind of uh, drive, and it's it's really um, uh, it, it's really a nice thing to know that there's folks out there like yourself that uh, thank you push and go the extra mile. Thank you. Thanks for saying that. But also, you know, like yes. But in other, in other, also what is also important to have people like you, because people like you, I couldn't do the project because you, you know, you have to have, you can have quality, you can have, like you said, entrepreneurial spirit. But if you don't meet people who see that in you, or if you don't convey that emotion so people can see that in you and they can join you, then you cannot do the project. It doesn't matter how good your idea is or whatever. You have to know how to communicate or present yourself or present your film to people so people can jump on board, especially when, I mean, you know, like there is no budget yeah. or super low budget. You know, I, I mean, mean, you are helping me so much, bro. And I mean, you know, yeah, just, I mean, we, it was it was it was we were both lucky to kind of, uh, you know, meet up when we did. I, I was wanting to do some independent projects. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you you kind of gave me carte blanche on the, the introductory, you know, segment um, and just yeah. said, I'd like you to come up with something. And I mean, I, I think I sent you over three demos. You did, and you did. And you were, you know, happy with with a lot of it, I think. And, and that was really nice because it allowed me to develop it and kind of show you a vision that I thought, you know, could complement what you'd already put together. Yeah. And um, oftentimes, Composers, you know, get a temp score and are confined to that genre yeah. that's been given to them by, you know, a yeah. music supervisor or the director. Yeah. And it's neat to be able to s take something from scratch and, uh -huh. and really create something unique. Uh -huh. Yeah, man, I mean, we complement each other in that regard. And, you know, I was surprised when you did the first uh, rough or the temp, like you would say, the first temp sound music for the animation, I was blown away because I didn't have to give you much feedback. I mean, you understood what I want, but what you composed, I was like, wow, this is the perfect thing that we need for the animation. And it really complements the animation, like how the caterpillar goes and the decision and then the consequences of the decision, like you hit the notes. Right. So yeah. I was like, man, it, it doesn't happen often, you know, when, 
you sent me to me and I was like, I'm blown away immediately. I was like, Jesus Christ, good, man. Oh, that's cool. And we play, we still play basketball. Like we play basketball together, usually every Wednesday and Friday. Right. And we play good basketball together. I like to play with you because as I said earlier, you're the one who can shut me down and then I, I, can't, I can't play that, you know? So I won't always, I want you in your team. Oh man, playing, playing basketball with this guy is a, a force. I mean, you, you, you have such a control of the game. And it's so <laughs> funny when, when this guy, when this guy <laughs> decides he wants to win the game, he takes over. And it's 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 funny because everybody just sits back and just like, oh, here he goes, here goes Attila. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, coinciding with that, <clears throat> your producing skills are really inspiring. I mean, to be able to pull together, whether it be you know folks on a basketball team or two hundred people for your you know your full-length feature film i mean i don't know how you do it i it's it's uh it's really it's really impressive thank you but you know i would just like add that like you said about me like when i want to win i'll try hard in a basketball game to win even though i'm not a basketball player but i see, I, I think like my philosophy that quality that you see me the way i play basketball or when you see my com commitment to win that's the same commitment when let's say I'm making friends or when I'm meeting new, new people or when I'm in a relationship or when I'm making a movie. Yeah. So I feel like, like the way you play basketball or like the way you walk or the way you do anything in life, I think that transcends just that only action. And it's like, it's everything else, the, the same way you approach everything else. Does that make sense? Sure, yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's what I meant when I said that, you know, the, the thing I, the spark I saw on the basketball court correlates to how you are in your professional life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, you know, and then, but you are like that too. I mean, nobody likes to lose. And even though sometimes you get hurt, you still hustle, you want to win and you're trying hard, you know? And that's why I, I that's- I do get hurt a lot. And you do get, especially <laughs> lately you got hurt. Like he just, his ankle, his knees, his calves, his, his finger right now, you know? Just, so I got lucky that you can play still the piano for yeah. my animation sound. Basketball with your is finger the off. worst sport for a piano player yeah. or a guitar player. But it's it's funny, man. Like how we we just play basketball, like such a simple thing. Everybody does some kind of sports or activities, and then from th from this it transpires so much more than just basketball. Then you meet a person who does the animation, you meet a person who does sound, you meet right. that da, da 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 da, and goes over basketball court. I mean, it's Los Angeles. It's like so many opportunities here. Oh yeah. It's like you just go get, go fast. out and do it. But, sure. but also thing is the how do how you communicate your vision that it comes down to the how much you you can be naked and show people who you are and then the more you can do that the better people respond to you you know because i'm sure if i'm bullshitting with you or i'm going over the behind your back and trying to get some uh, how you say that like benefits to use you into my advantage i mean people feel it you know sooner or later people feel it and sure. you wouldn't work with me you wouldn't offer your help like so selflessly so, well, I mean, that that also speaks to um, your charisma and your overall personality. I mean, one thing I've learned in the music business is that there might be a situation where you're working at a studio and maybe, maybe the engineer or the mixer or even a studio musician isn't the greatest uh -huh. on the planet, but if they're a good hang, then that makes all the difference and uh -huh. maybe the best you know uh studio musician or engineer or mixer isn't going to get called back because nobody wants to the energy the personality <laughs> yeah, the nobody character wants to be around them yeah that's interesting you know like and i i you know the older i get the more i notice it's all obviously it's very important the level of your knowledge right it's important because you don't want to work with somebody who has no knowledge and just like wasting your time but in the same time the energy of who you are yeah. and how you express yourself it's essential totally it's essential you know so great i mean i, I i'm very happy that i had a chance to meet you and i'm i'm happy and lucky that you are able to work on this together and i can't wait to show you the the finished product i think you and maggie i think you guys are going to be very proud yeah what we accomplished together <clears throat> yeah i can't wait you know amazing
Cool, Chris. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for this great location. <laughs> and great, man. It's all for you, bro. Thanks, bro. Let's play basketball on Wednesday. We'll see about it. That finger is good. <laughs> Your fingers, you can play in my team and we can win. How about that? I'm gonna tape up my whole hand. <laughs> cool, man. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Dragon. Amazing. Let's check out your boat. <laughs>